In this video, I'm going to showcase some basic controls for using and navigating Medley Online. We'll start with some typing controls and shortcuts. Before that, keep in mind that the Medley environment may feel like a very unusual environment to use. It came before the Apple Macintosh and Microsoft Windows, so while it does contain familiar elements such as Windows and a cursor, you're going to find out very quickly that Medley has a different interface. And for those who may have used Medley in the past, there are some modernizations implemented into this online version, so things may not be exactly the same as you remember them. And lastly, as of recording this video, Medley Online is a work in progress. Things are still being implemented, and not everything syncs up with the documentation. In order to use Medley Online, you're going to need a keyboard and a mouse, preferably a three-button mouse. Now, what I mean by a three-button mouse is a mouse with a dedicated left, right, and middle buttons, or a scroll wheel. This is important as Medley's features are controlled with different mouse buttons. I say this because there are some mice, like some Apple products, that lack dedicated right or middle mouse buttons. And if you're on a laptop or using a trackpad, doing things like holding right mouse and pressing middle mouse may be difficult. So go ahead and save yourself some difficulty and use a three button mouse. And here we are, logged into Medley Online. And the first thing I'm going to show you is some basic typing controls and shortcuts. Typing is a little bit different than on a normal terminal. You may be tempted to use arrow keys to control the carrot or to navigate past commands, but these do not work in Medley. Instead, you need to use the mouse to control the carrot. There are also a few typing shortcuts that may be helpful to know. We'll provide a small table at the end of this video, so for now, we'll keep on going. Let's start off with some basic arithmetic. Remember that the syntax for Lisp revolves around lists, so we're going to type this function in a prefix expression. Notice how the function executed as soon as we typed in a left parenthesis. We can also replace the addition sign with plus. Now let's see what happens when we misinput an argument in plus. Instead of typing the whole entire command again, I could use fix. The fix function is part of the program called the programmer's assistant. Notice the numbers next to each line. This is the history list. We can use functions like fix and redo in pair with the history list to specify which line we want to adjust. Fix is used to edit a command's input. Redo is to redo a certain command. There's another command, such as double question mark, that you need to specify which history line number, and this displays the command and its output. Now, if I wanted to do more arithmetic operations, but I didn't know the right commands, I could use the man function to bring up documentation. So let's go ahead and type in man plus. And here we see a page of the IRM opened in a dinfo window. This shows a few different functions we can call to do some math functions. We can also open up dinfo through the background menu and see where our current chapter lies within the IRM. Some documentation of functions like open may open in a new window. Finally, let's make our own function. Let's implement something simple that takes a few arguments, say comparing two numbers. We define a function with this syntax. First, defund. Next is the function name, my function, and then parameters in parentheses. In this case, a and b for two numbers. Then we put in our if statement in a prefix expression. So greater than a and b. Finally, we'll make our then else clauses. We can see by testing this the function uh, by calling it my function three and four. And we get the second number is greater. And then we'll recall it and test nine and one. Uh, so the first number is greater, nine being bigger than one. So what happens if we misspell our function name? Well, this is when dwim comes into play. It checks the user and asks if it wants to run the closest match function. And now it calls the actual my function. Lastly, here are a few keyboard shortcuts that may be useful. I hope this video helped.